Good morning, it's Crampy here, and I'm greeting you today from Daniel and Kathy's basement, uh, where uh, Uncle Bud and Melody and I have been staying for a couple days while those guys are at the Passion Conference 2024, and I'm just taking care of work business here from my laptop and their excellent internet service. But I thought it would be a great uh, time to take a minute and um, unpack another one of my favorite verses. Uh, and this one, it, it's right up there. It's top two for sure. Um, but since I, I, I mentioned Psalm 25, 14 as my, my main ultimate favorite verse, this is, this is a clear number two. So it's Proverbs 123 and it says, Turn ye at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words to you. And um, there's there's a few reasons why I really, really like that verse. Um, one is, is that um, it it provides a, a pretty clear, specific pathway to, to some virtues and some realities that uh, we as Christians um, uh, understand and earnestly covet. Uh, Christians have tasted what it is to be filled with, to, to, to experience the Spirit of God. They've also experienced what it is uh, because of the indwelling Spirit to understand the words of God. But this here um, provides a pathway, an explanation for how we arrive at those realities and how we grow in them and, and continually um, move forward in our our, um, our growth of those realities. So um, in particular, uh, just a couple of observations. One is, is that um, this scripture implies that these are things to be desired. So I don't want to overstate something obvious, but the, um, the filling of God's spirit is a thing to be desired. It's a blessing. It's given to us as a blessing. It's given to us as the main mark of what new covenant reality includes or is built upon the indwelling spirit the reality of god's spirit dwelling in us the affirmation of us knowing that we're his children and the unfolding of of mysteries that are hidden to those who who don't know him and so that's implied in this that this it's a blessing to have god's spirit uh poured out upon us uh, also implied is that it's a blessing. It's a good thing to have God's word made known to us. And so I don't know if many of you have had the experience where at a certain point in your life, perhaps before you were a Christian or sometimes even, even afterwards, where the word of God doesn't seem to like click. It doesn't seem to make sense. It's kind of uh, vague or, and there are, there are scriptures that are, are mysterious and, um, there's imagery that we don't quite understand. But I'm just really talking about the basic. You open the Bible up and it's like, eh, you know, I don't get it. What's what's the big fuss about? So this in this blessing, this promise is is designed to uh, affirm that it's a good thing to have God's word known, made known to us. But most importantly, there's a key as to how we put ourselves in line to receive these blessings. And it's that very first, uh, those very first words, which says, turn at my reproof, turn at the correction. That's what reproof means, correction. If we have a heart that is willing to turn when corrected, then we are in line to receive the promises. It's conditional thing. It's kind of like, if you turn, then you'll be poured out, then the spirit will be poured out. If you turn, then God's word will be made known unto you. And, and, there's, and here's the key. The key is the will. And I remember years and years ago, I went to Litchfield Grain uh, in, in Litchfield. It's a grain mill. And I was watching them mix some feed for us. And we specified what we want. This kind of, this, this grain, this, this mix, and this quantity. And they, they, they have this big hopper. And these shoots all come down into the hopper from different directions and they all pour in different things. And this hopper starts filling up with all of the, the ingredients. And they're kind of mixed together as they're all pouring in simultaneously. But until that hopper shoot is opened, it doesn't go and fill any bags. So when I was standing there watching this hopper fill up and then I saw the guy pull the chute and all the grain went 
right down into the hopper and it went through the, the augers and started filling bags. I was like, hey, that's like a, a picture of what it is when we surrender our will to God. It's like when we say, okay, God, I, I, I choose to uh, agree with what your view is on this particular thing. I see that I was doing it wrong. I was viewing it wrong. I was understanding it wrong. And I'm, I was going the wrong direction, but I'm willing to turn now because I, I'm accepting your rule and your lordship in my life. That is turning at God's correction. That is a heart that God says, ah, and when he sees that, the shoot opens up and the spirit pours out, the words become known. And, um, you know, the reason for that is, is that ultimately what, what we are uh, experiencing is objective reality because the truth is, is that God is the Lord. He has the wisdom. He has the, the things that, that tend to and provide the abundant life that we inherently all want. But when we're all going our own way, uh, like sheep that are going astray, then we're lost and we're, we're hopeless and we don't, we don't experience the abundant life. And we don't really understand God's word until we will are willing to do it. And one, there's a couple of verses that, that affirm this, but uh, in the New Testament, John 7, 17 says, Jesus was speaking to, to those that were questioning his authority or, you know, they were, they were in doubt about him. And, you know, he said, well, um, oh, what's it say? Um, he, if any man will do God's will, he'll know whether the teaching I'm saying is of myself or whether it's the truth of, from God. The, 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 the defining thing that marks those who will know and understand the truth is if they have a will, a desire to do God's will. And that's the very same thing that Proverbs 123 is teaching us. So today, as we are um, you know, kind of just looking at our lives. Are we are we abounding in the in 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 in, in the fullness of the Spirit? Is God's word sweet and precious to us? Uh, Proverbs one twenty three always points us back to a good reference point. Let's have a teachable heart. Let's be willing to do. Let let's let God direct our will, because ultimately, what we really believe is that which we are living, that which we are doing. We can know what we really believe because we always live what we believe. We either live consistent with our statement that God is Lord in my life, I'm willing to serve him, or we're living with consistent with the other, which basically says we are in the center of things, we're in charge, we're calling the shots, we've got the strength, and things like that. So um, today, let's, let's, let's reaffirm our commitment that, that God is Lord in our life, that we have a heart that wants to be filled with his spirit, we have a heart that wants to know his words because we delight in them, and we're willing to let him guide us. Amen. I love you. God bless you guys.